Hi, my name is David Brandon, Managing Director of the JAMS Foundation. Welcome to the 2022 Warren Knight Distinguished Service Award presentation. I want to thank the ABA section of dispute resolution as ever for making this time for us to present the Warren Knight Award and to honor our 2022 recipient, the Alliance for Peacebuilding. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the award, it is named for JAMS beloved founder and its very first mediator, Judge Warren Knight. And it, it is intended to recognize the work of extraordinary individuals and organizations in promoting collaborative forms of engagement and in preventing and resolving conflict in the communities they serve. On, on a somewhat related note, I am proud to share that this year is the JAMS Foundation's 20th anniversary as a funder of conflict prevention and dispute resolution efforts, both across the United States and around the world. And I mention that today because I think one of the key lessons that we have learned over that time, uh, apart from generally doing your homework and engaging broadly with interested stakeholders, is really to try to connect as many dots as possible, to build on and to leverage our collective experience insight and resources to produce better results and more inclusive and sustainable impact. From its earliest days, the Alliance for Peacebuilding has embodied this approach in an evolving series of A-list acronyms from ACRON to AICPR and finally to AFP, the Alliance has created a model that emphasizes not only the need for collaboration among the stakeholders to any conflict, but a broader need for collaboration among the collaborators, the facilitators, and the peacemakers themselves. With more than 150 member organizations working in more than 180 countries, the Alliance has fostered a vibrant ecosystem across geographies, cultures, and fields of practice to recognize and celebrate wheels that have already been invented, to adapt old wheels for new contexts, and working together to fashion entirely new approaches and solutions to ever-evolving challenges. Through its annual PeaceCon gathering, its work with government officials and policy policymakers, as well as grassroots organizations and community leaders, and its emphasis on research and evidence to help strengthen its efforts, and a wide range of working groups turning that research into collaborative action, the Alliance has demonstrated in countless ways the need and the value of connecting the many dots that connect us all to each other. Their work allows us all to dream bigger, to reach further and to accomplish more than we might have imagined possible, and certainly more than any of us could do alone. And so it is my pleasure to present this year's 2022 Warren Knight Distinguished Service Award and this accompanying $25,000 grant to the Alliance for Peacebuilding and its Executive Director, Elizabeth Hume. Liz, on behalf of myself and the JAMS Foundation, thank you and congratulations. Thank you so much. And on behalf of the board, the staff, members of the Alliance for Peacebuilding, please allow me to express my deep gratitude for this award. All of us at AFP are humbled to receive the 2020, the 2022 JAMS Warren Knight Distinguished Service Award that recognizes the work of extraordinary individuals and organizations and their commitment to helping prevent and resolve conflict. AFP is a network of 160 plus organizations working in 181 countries globally, even here in the United States. And at its heart, it is working to prevent and reduce violence and violent conflict and build sustainable peace globally. Again, including here in the United States. And I really wanna emphasize that point because unfortunately only a few years ago, it would have been unheard of that the Alliance for Peace Building would be working in the US. But in 2015, our board and team agreed that it would be hypocritical not to be working on peace and stability in our own backyard. And your generous recognition and support makes our collective work possible and more impactful. And again, we are grateful. But I'm also grateful for the visionaries that worked so hard to build AFP more than 20 years ago with all its different acronyms, a small group of people that are still incredibly connected into AFP knew that collectively working together was vital for the success of peace building. 
the peace building field was disparate, not well organized, and let's face it, not well known. Before when you said peace building, people would think of a peace sign or a state of being. But now more and more, people know that peace building or building peace is not just a symbol or a state of mind. Peace is built over time and sustainable peace, meaning not just an absence of violence or conflict, it is possible. And in our connect, interconnected global world, it's more important than ever. We're committed at the Alliance for Peace Building to expanding and accelerating collective action as the leading peace building field building organization AFP mobilizes the field to support collective action on urgent crises from Afghanistan to Ethiopia to Ukraine, and again, even here in the United States. AFP also focuses on long-term policy change by building peace-building champions so that peace-building and conflict prevention are at the center of global development and diplomatic strategies. And we do this by educating and advocating for game-changing policies, laws, and funding, both in the US and globally. AFP ensures that peace-building lessons and findings lead to evidence-based informed policy programming and legal frameworks. And when we get these laws and policies changed and adopted, the work doesn't just stop there. We make sure they're implemented robustly so they're not just great words on a piece of paper. We're also working to change the narrative around peace uh, and supporting evidence-based framing and communication strategies that increase public understanding and supportive peace building. So whether you're in a community or a policymaker or the private sector, so that everyone demands that peace building is the tool of first resort. Now that just sounded like a lot of wonky jargon, but let me give you an example. The Global Fragility Act is one of those game-changing laws adopted in 2019 by a bipartisan Congress here in the US. And for the first time, it puts conflict prevention and peace building at the center of US foreign policy development and, uh, and, and diplomacy. It seems obvious, but prior to this game-changing law that AFP and its partner Mercy Corps have helped to develop and get adopted in the US, the US government didn't have a strategy that focused on peace building and conflict prevention. Let that sink in for a second. We didn't have a strategy that put peace building and conflict prevention at the center. And now this law is being implemented. To start with only five priority countries, but it's a start. It's not everything we wanted, but it's a groundbreaking start. But let's be clear, peace building and reducing uh, violent conflict and, and building sustainable peace is one of the greatest challenges of our time. Prior to the war in Ukraine, we were already at a 30 year high in global violent conflict. The war in Ukraine is contributing to dire food shortages in countries that were already experiencing fragility and conflict. We also know that COVID-19, this global pandemic, is stabilization in reverse, and that the global pandemic is not just a health crisis. It's increasing instability and violence, exacerbating conflict dynamics, and increasing toxic polarization. Research has shown that countries with worsening social cohesion, regardless of their health infrastructure, did worse during the pandemic. We also know that mis- and disinformation is fueling conflict globally, from Ukraine to Syria to Afghanistan to the United States, inflaming conflict. And we know that climate change and conflict compound each other and countries and regions most fragile will be impacted the most. While these challenges are complex, hard to solve and alarming, we don't have to accept that violent conflict is inevitable. So I'm accepting this generous award on behalf of all those living in conflict affected in fragile states and those working to build peace. I promise you that the small but extremely dedicated and passionate team at AFP is working tirelessly as part of a growing and powerful community 
that understands that while we have a global violent conflict problem, we don't have to accept it. So I ask, join us as we work together because we know that peace doesn't just happen, we have to build it. And once again, I am so grateful for this award and what it means to the Alliance for Peace Building and its powerful and growing community. Thank you so much. Thank you.